Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to our webinar around alternative texts. Um, I think we'll have, uh, we should have a few more folks joining us this morning. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. But if, if you see anyone jump in and have any questions, please somebody unmute and let me know. <laughs> um, and I apologize in advance. I completely forgot that we've got work happening in our backyard this morning. So if the, um, if the sawing <laughs> noise becomes too much, please, please let me know. Um, and I'll, um, run downstairs and see if I can find a quiet place <laughs> to, to, uh, continue. And <laughs> excuse me, my allergies are kicking this morning too. So welcome everyone. I'm Donna Murray. I serve as the digital accessibility specialist at DPI <clears throat> and this is a fairly new role. So if, um, if you've met me in the past, I've been serving in digital teaching and learning for the past 10 years at the agency and recently, um, was able to transition to this new role. So digital accessibility has kind of been my side hat for quite a number of years now. Um, but fortunately, I'm able to devote all of my time now to this topic. Um, <clears throat> so I do have the shortcut link in um, on this slide. Sure. Excuse me. I encourage you to jot that down. Um, I'll throw it in the chat too before our session's over. Um, it's go.ncdpi.gov forward slash alt text. Um, and that way you can um, access the slides following the presentation. Uh, and I actually also have a link so that you can make a copy of the slides. So if you'd like to repurpose these slides, um, what's mine is yours always. So feel free to, um, you know, to use this in professional learning or to make a copy of the slides so that you can even take your own notes if, that, if that's helpful. So um, we have a small group this morning. Yes, I'll drop in the chat. Hold that thought. Presentation slides. So here is the direct link to the slide deck. So you're welcome. Um, this is being recorded. So the intent here is that I will uh, post the recording as well as the transcript. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, on the page where you can um, register for upcoming webinars. I'll be adding a section down here for archived webinars and <coughs> we'll add those um, recording links and the transcripts there. So let me try to get back to my tabs here. Um, <coughs> good gracious. So we do have a small group. Feel free to unmute at any time to ask a question. You can use the chat, raise your hand. Um, this is definitely an informal type session. So um, I want to meet your needs. Feel free to participate in whatever way works best for you. There is captioning available um, within WebEx. So feel free to turn on captions if that's helpful. So our, our goal today um, from 9 to 9.45 is to um, talk about the, the importance of alternative text and then some strategies on how to write effective alt text. So we'll talk about the why, the, the how, and, um, and I've got a couple activities embedded in here so that you can practice um, in real time if that if that's, uh, meets your learning needs. So I always like to start off my presentations by sharing just a little bit about my personal why. Um, professionally, I love all things education, all things ed tech, but personally, I have a connection to all things accessibility as well. And, um, and that's my daughter, Olivia. So she is 19 years old and has multiple disabilities. So she's, she has physical disabilities as well as cognitive disabilities. She's autistic and um, we call her our mystery girl. So she is, uh, has challenged me for nearly two decades now in this um, realm of accessibility and trying to ensure that I remove as many barriers as I can proactively for her. And alt text that we talk about today is, is one of those um, 
those strategies to help ensure that uh, content is accessible. So here's, we'll get started kind of with the, with the what and the why of alt text. And to give you a little bit of information about the current landscape, there's actually a nonprofit organization called Web AIM. And every year they take a look at the top 1 million most visited websites. And uh, those are both um, uh, organizations like education organizations, but other ones that top in the 1 million most visited sites are also like commercial company websites. And this organization uses just a quick um, automated accessibility tool called WAVE. Um, and they take a look at just the home page of those websites to get an idea of how many accessibility issues there are. And it's pretty staggering, actually. These are the results from this year's um, evaluation in February. And there's almost 57 errors per web page. So, you know, this is not a challenge that is specific to just North Carolina or just to education. There are lots of um, of errors on access, I mean, on web pages out there, including the lack of alternative text. Um, in fact, common accessibility failures do include alt text, but other things as well. Things like low contrast text, making sure that there's enough contrast between um, text and a background color. Um, things like ambiguous link text. So instead of click here, um, there's enough descriptive information in a link so that folks understand what's going to happen, you know, where they're likely to go when they click that link. And then even just things like improper heading structure. So these are the type, you know, some common types of accessibility failures on those on those um, 1 million web pages that were reviewed. We're going to hone in on that missing alt text today, but I do have some upcoming webinars about things like using color um, effectively so that it's accessible. Uh, and of course, other strategies as well, like that how to make more descriptive link text and how to use that heading um, semantics. So <clears throat> writing alt text, um, actually, I guess I should have a couple of these slides I could have put back in that in that previous section. When we talk about what is alt text, it's basically the the a, a textual description. So I say, imagine you're describing that image to someone over the phone. So they can't access the image for whatever reason. Imagine that you're having to describe that image to someone over the phone. What would you include in your description? And so that's typically added in an alt text box. And we'll talk about how to find that alt text box in the following slides. And then sometimes it's also actually just attached to the image metadata. So if you are familiar with writing HTML, it's actually included in the alt tag of, of HTML. So um, I would say that most of us, when we're adding alt text, are just going to search for that alt text box, and that's where we will put that textual description. But again, just imagine that you're describing it over the phone. Um, and we want, you know, there's this kind of sweet spot where we want to be as succinct as possible, but we also need to include any of that you know, really important information, anything that's specific to the context of, of the image itself. And we'll talk about a couple examples here in just a minute. Um, and another good thing to think of is, you know, is this image really important? Why did I put this image in, in here to begin with? What happens if I remove that image? Do I lose some important information? If I do, then I need to make sure that I'm including that in the alt text. So imagine if I remove that image, um, what, what's going to happen to the content? Am I losing some information? If so, there's the important reason for us to add it into the alt text. And there are lots of people that use alt text. I think even I in presentations often talk about screen reader users, but those aren't the only folks who might be using the alt text. It could be someone who's using um, speech input software. Um, so it could be someone who uses speech input to say to get them to be able to access buttons on a web page. 
So maybe they're trying to fill out a form or they're trying to access um, um, a link or, or a button that's going to help them navigate a website. And they might be using speech input software to, to navigate the page rather than their keyboard or their trackpad. Um, it could be someone who's using speech enabled websites. So think about if we're, um, you know, even driving in a car and we ask our AI device on our phone to read something to us from a web page. Well, if it's also going to be sharing information from images, then it's going to need that alt text to be able to give us that visual description. Um, and sometimes we just access a web page where images don't load for whatever reason. Maybe the website's not working properly or our Wi-Fi is slow. Um, so sometimes we can't access images even if we don't have a um, specific visual impairment or we're not using assistive technologies. Um, and actually it helps with search engine optimization. So SEO, uh, the alt text actually then becomes part of that search engine index. Um, in fact, some people use alt text uh, ineffectively because they just load the alt text with keywords to help improve that search engine optimization. So that's a, that's a poor, <laughs> that's an ineffective use of alt text, but it does help when you add alt text um, to, to kind of be able to include, have that included in that index for search engine. So it actually can help um, folks find specific content because it, the search engines are able to reference that text instead of just um, ignoring those images. Typically, when you're looking for where to place alt text, you can usually just right click on an image. Uh, typically, that's kind of the fastest um, way to find the alt text or image description box. So in this screenshot here in a Google Doc, I just right clicked <clears throat> on an image and went to the alt text option. And I had this sidebar navigation that popped up where I'm able to add in a description in the uh, description box under the alt text caret. Um, and then here's an example like for Microsoft. If I right click on an image and go to edit alt text, then I have a pop up window where I'm able to add in that alt text. And you'll see here that it even gives some descriptions on, or excuse me, some ideas on what to include. <clears throat> so just some reminders <clears throat> about how to write some effective alt text. And we'll talk about that um, in greater detail in just a minute. You can also notice here this AI tool where it will generate alt text for you. Um, <clears throat> and I do have a slide later on where I talk about AI and alt text, but let me just go ahead and mention that uh, it's, this can be helpful, but definitely deserves that human review because uh, generated alt text may not include some contextual information that really only you as a human will be able to, to really help with because you're gonna know about the context of that image and, um, and be able to add some more specific details based on that context. And then we're going to talk about what to do if something's decorative in Microsoft. You can actually just click this checkbox and it will mark that image as decorative um, in that in the HTML code. So it will actually skip over the image altogether <clears throat> if you're using a screen reader. Um, and that's helpful because then if the image really isn't giving you um, pertinent information, then there's really no reason for me to even uh, include a description with it. So we'll talk about the nuances of that as we move forward today. I've just added some links in here um, that will point you to <clears throat> some web pages to help you with some specific tools. So if you're trying to write alt text in Canvas, the LMS, uh, then I've just pointed you into the direction of the help page that, that helps you understand where and how to add alt text in some of these common tools. There are three types of images that we're going to talk about today for alt text. There's informative images, again, where we're going to be including some pertinent information from that visual. There's things like decorative images, like I just mentioned in that Microsoft tab, and then functional images. So an image that kind of stands in for um, a button or a link, something that not only is um, 
for visual purposes, but actually also serves as a function again, like a, like a button or a link. So we're going to talk about each of these separately so that we can talk uh, about. Um, the important things to consider with those types of images and how to make sure that your alt text is effective. So, the 1st thing <clears throat> is informative images and again, these are the type that are sharing some type of information, providing some sort of content that's important. So, the alt text needs to be near the image. So, in that alt text or image description box, or if you're familiar with HTML, there is an alt tag. And so alt equals, and then you would put your alt text in quotation marks. Um, and so when a screen reader comes across that image, it's going to read the text for the, whatever has been put with that alt tag. Or um, if you're not familiar with HTML, that alt text box is essentially building that in the HTML for you, and it would just read that text. So there's um, some subjectivity that comes when you're describing an image. Uh, but some things to kind of keep in keep in mind is again, imagine you're telling someone over the phone about that image. You're describing it to them. It might be that it's important because of the topic that you're talking about. It may be important to to tell who's in the image and to, to describe what they look like. Or it might just be that you need to say this is an image of Donna Murray. Maybe that's enough information, and you don't need to know that she's a middle-aged white woman with gray hair. <laughs> um, so it's, it's really important to consider the context. It might be helpful to include the setting of the image. In some instances, it might be helpful, helpful to describe the colors or even um, an expression or emotions. You know, if, if Donna Murray is smiling um, because of what's, you know, the, the context of the image, it's important to share that she's happy then it might be that I describe Donna um, as a middle-aged white woman with gray hair who is smiling and looking at the camera. <clears throat> it really depends, again, on the context. So, again, you're trying to find that sweet spot of all the important information that would be necessary for someone to truly understand what you're talking about, but also not so much information that it's really more um, uh, it's, it's kind of getting in the way of, of understanding the content on the page. So it's, it's, it's interesting to try to find that sweet spot. And I'll be honest, it's a skill set that I am still working on because I tend to over describe my images and I'm still trying to find that sweet spot. But those are a few things to keep in mind um, that you might want to include when describing an image. So now I want to give an example. This is um, an informative image. Uh, it's of the Biltmore house. So in the image, I can see, uh, like the front facade of the, um, of the Biltmore house. There's a couple of trees that are kind of framing the image. You can see the front lawn, um, that's uh, meticulously mowed. And then in the, the kind of the backdrop, the background of this setting here includes, um, the mountains, the Blue Ridge Mountains, and you can see it's a pretty cloudy, but but also bright day. So the, the context here was that this was a travel blog. So I'm including this picture on the travel blog, then the alt text might read something like this. The Biltmore State in Asheville, North Carolina, with its grand architecture and sprawling lawns nestled against the backdrop of the Blue Ridge Mountains on a sunny day. Now, even that may be um, kind of extra descriptive. Maybe I didn't even need as many adjectives and, and quite as much detail here, but essentially what I'm trying to share is it's, it's an image that shows, you know, again, the backdrop of the Blue Ridge Mountains with this huge estate, <laughs> this huge house um, sitting uh, with these, you know, with that sprawling front yard um, and basically describing that this image is um, is of the Biltmore State so that someone who's reading on the travel blog understands what this image is sharing. 
But if I kind of change the context a little bit, and let's say that this was for a college course, an architectural college course, it might need, mean that I need to include a little bit more specifics about the architecture of the building within my alt text. So notice a little bit of shift here in the alt text. Same image, slightly different alt text. The Biltmore State in Asheville, North Carolina, showcasing its chateauesque architecture with steeply pitched roofs, ornate spires, and intricate stonework set against the backdrop of the Blue Ridge Mountains on a sunny day. Exact same picture, but since I am changing the context a little bit for this college course as opposed to just this travel blog, I included a bit more information that is specific to the architecture. So, it's really, yeah, Molly, it's, it's very interesting to think about alt text. The context is everything. It really is everything. Um, because in this case, it was the exact same image, but the context changed a little bit about um, the, the important information that I would need to include in the alt text. Now, if I'm using a screen reader, then typically a screen reader will either, when it gets to an image, it's either going to read to me um, and, and start off by saying the word image to let me know that I have landed on a visual image. And sometimes screen readers, depending on the screen reader you're using, it might read the alt text first and then at the end say image. But either way, usually a screen reader is going to identify that you're at, at an image by saying the word image before or after reading the alt text. So in that case, it's not important for us necessarily to start by saying an image of the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, North Carolina, because it would be kind of redundant. If a screen reader came across this image, it, it would then say image image of the Biltmore State in Asheville, North Carolina, and so it's just kind of redundant to include that. Now, sometimes it might be important to explain what type of image it is. Maybe it's a, um, a Polaroid, or maybe your image is a bar graph. <laughs> so in some instances, it might be helpful to explain, you know, what type of image it is to really get a, a clear understanding of the visual. But in, in generally speaking, we don't need to say image of or graphic of because our screen reader, the screen reader will announce that for us to let us know we're on an image. And there are some nuances to alt text when we think about it in comparison to a caption or a long description. So a caption is really going to include things like maybe um, who the photographer is, you know, kind of like a um, citation, if you will. Um, remember that a, an alt text is intended to, to replace the image. So if the image were gone, what's important to know about what that image looked like? You know, what's the visual? Um, and a caption kind of goes in conjunction with the image. So it's kind of additional information, <laughs> excuse me, to go along with the image. So that's kind of, a, you know, the, the, the difference between alt text and caption. The caption goes with the image. It's additional information. The alt, the alt text replaces it. Now, a long description, um, there, there's kind of a sweet spot with this too that, that is a little bit subjective. A long description might be needed, especially if I've got a pretty intricate um, image. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe the image is of a pretty intricate organizational chart. And so it's got a ton of information, maybe even a ton of text right inside the image, or maybe it's even um, an academic image that in order to really provide all the information you need, then you've got a lot of text to include in the alt text. In that case, you may want to put that text right inside the web page rather than having it just in the alt text. In other words, that kind of long description might be helpful for everyone, not just for someone who might be um, a screen reader user or some of those other examples we shared in the in one of the previous slides. So a long description is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's a longer description. Alt text is typically fairly short. Think of it kind of like 
um, tweet size <laughs> um, or something that you might have on on X or Twitter, whatever you're, whatever you're calling it these days. I still call it Twitter, <laughs> um, creature of habit. But a long description is it might be something that is included somewhere else in the page that would be visually accessible by everyone, not just someone who's using a screen reader. So one thing to do, and this kind of goes back to that example I just gave a second ago about the org chart, um, try to avoid images of text. So in this example, someone has a table where they've kind of built out the agenda for, it looks like, you know, like the a school day, um, what the time frames for each period and homeroom and lunch breaks. But if this this is basically a screenshot of that table. So it's an image rather than a table of text. So just imagine if you couldn't access this image, the page doesn't load or you're a screen reader user and you can't access this. You're missing out on a lot of textual information. Now I can put that text within the alt text um, or I could have an additional long description that's available on the page that kind of has a textual version of this table. But as much as possible, we need to try to avoid images of text because in this case, if I were a screen reader user and I needed to be able to zoom in or not even a screen reader user, but just someone maybe with a visual impairment that needs that requires me to zoom in or to customize what the text looks like for myself on a page, maybe I need to change the, um, the contrast in order for me to be able to visually access text. I can't do that. If that text is embedded into this image here, it's going to be difficult for me to really customize and personalize how I access this text. I can't change the font, the font size. I can try to zoom in, but that might change, you know, that might get pixelated. So as much as possible, we just need to try to avoid images of text. Now, I briefly mentioned earlier when we were looking at the Microsoft example that there are some images that are decorative. So if I put like a, just kind of a stock image with my newsletter, um, or maybe I have a web page that has a, um, just a kind of a, maybe a visual blue line across the top of the page. Or, those are really just for visual appeal and they don't really add any specific informational content. In that case, you can mark those images as decorative. So either put um, the alt attribute, um, if, you're, if you write HTML, you can just put open and close quotations in the alt tag and that just indicates that you can skip right over the image. There's nothing to be read. Um, if you're writing alt text, if you have an alt text box, Excuse me. You can simply put the word decorative in there and that will, um, if, it, if it is read aloud by a screen reader, then it would just say image decorative and then move right on. So there's no need to describe decorative images because if it's not adding content, if it's truly just for visual appeal, then there's no need for a visual description in text mode. So um, I do have some examples here and I'm looking at our time. Uh, let's take just a minute. If you are following along, in fact, I'll add the direct link here. I actually have a couple of different options here. These are things that I've used in some in-person trainings. Um, this one just actually has some sample images where in trainings I've had um, printed versions of these as well as the slide deck and I just encourage folks to take a look at some of these images and try to write alt text for them. So think about, <clears throat> you know, is there a time that this would be decorative? Is there a time where I would need to describe um, how these dancers are standing and, and what their, <clears throat> what their um, costumes look like? You know, what, is there a, are, are there some nuances to the context that may make the alt text um, slightly different? Another example here is for like this piece of artwork. If this was for an art class and I'm talking about a specific type of medium or a specific type of artistic design, then it might be important to include that within the alt text. It might be that this is just a stand, uh, kind of a stock image that I include for my um, upcoming newsletter about an art show. And I just want this to kind of be a visual 
you know, something to catch your eye so that you'll read that blurb about the upcoming art show, then that might be that mean that this could just be marked as decorative. So just an opportunity for you to kind of practice writing alt text for different types of images. This is um, an activity that I have done with um, in person trainings. The other one that I have here is actually for uh, if you're familiar with DTL's um, NC Bold sessions that we have over the summer. Last summer, I had a, um, a, a setup where you could come by and it's kind of like a poster session where you could come by and interact and learn more about accessibility. And I had kind of a Harry Potter theme with it. So I actually created one, one activity where <clears throat> you could come by and learn about alt text and then give it practice. So I have 12 images here, and this is kind of a self-directed practice activity that you can try. So you can jump in and actually, let me go ahead and throw this link in here. You can actually interact with this and practice writing alt text. So I'll just click on one as an example. <clears throat> I can click on number seven here, and I see this meme of Hermione with a quote. She's kind of looking shocked or surprised. And the quote on the image itself says, when you hear someone say that accessibility isn't important, and Hermione is looking shocked and appalled um, that someone might say that. So that the context was that this was a social media post about the importance of digital accessibility, then <clears throat> my alt text, the most effective alt text, is probably not going to be Harry Potter meme because that's not giving me enough information. <clears throat> if the social media post was about the importance of digital accessibility, this is more like a caption. <laughs> it just tells me what that image is rather than a, um, an alt textual um, description. This meme of Hermione with a shocked facial expression, the text reads, when you hear someone say that accessibility isn't important, that's more likely to be effective alt text rather than this this caption version. So if I click on it, I get some feedback that says bravo, um, kind of gives me some information to you know to remind me the importance of including that text in my alt text, and then I even give kind of a tip on each of these um, responses to kind of give you an idea of something else that you can practice. Uh, for example, if, if you use Twitter or X, <clears throat> I need to update the slide here <laughs> uh, with the new language. Um, if you use like one of the GIFs from their gallery, typically it's going to read something like Harry Potter GIF or Harry Potter meme, which again is more like a caption than alt text. So this is a, kind of an extra little tip here to say, um, make sure that you are describing what's actually happening in the GIF or, or actually happening within the meme, just like this example. So anyway, this will this is just an example of 12 different um, magical themed uh, images where you can actually practice and get some self feedback on uh, different types of of images and and contextual alt text. So we've talked about informational images. We've talked very briefly about decorative, and now let's talk about functional images. Now these are a little bit different because they actually do something. In addition to it being an image that might have some, um, some informational content, it's also functional. So it might be that like for a form, maybe there's a submit button but the submit button looked is an image that has the word submit on it. So that's kind of a functional image. And so we have to treat those a little bit differently because not only do we need to, to describe the image, we also need to explain what's gonna happen when someone activates the, the click. <laughs> so however they activate buttons, um, maybe they activate it with a screen reader or maybe they use their keyboard or trackpad to activate it. We need to explain what's going to happen when they activate that, that link. So what I've done in the next few slides is actually share some different types of functional images, and I've included what I would say the alt text should be. And I've also included the HTML code. To, so if you are familiar with HTML, excuse me, you can see what that would look like, and I've highlighted the alt text. Um, as well to kind of 
point out where the alt text would live in the HTML. So in this instance, if I'm using an image as a link, think about like on a web page. I think we're all pretty familiar with most, most web page structure. There's usually in the top left hand corner, there's a logo um, that will take me back to the home page. That's typically, you know, anytime we are trying to find the home page, I think we probably all navigate to the top left hand corner and find the logo because that's typically what where it's going to take us. So in this instance, I'm showing an example of NCDPI's logo. And let's imagine that this is in the top left hand corner of a web page ready to take me back home. Then the alt text should read something like this North Carolina Department of Public Instruction home or home page. Something that's telling me what the link, you know, what the logo is, what it's for, and also what's going to happen when I click that, click that link, because that image is, is saved as a link. So basically, I'm just saying this is the DPI logo, and it's going to take me home. So I just put NCDPI, or I, you know, wrote out the whole, the whole word, NCDPI home. And that is enough information in the alt text to let me know what it is and where I'm going. This next example, example logo image within link text, the image it's decorative, and then I also have the link right beside it. The alt text would be redundant. There's really no need for me to describe what this logo is and that, it's, that a link is going to take me home when I've got the direct link right beside it. So in this case, I could actually mark this logo as decorative because the link itself reads NCDPI home, and that's going to take me to the same place. So in this case, I could just mark that as decorative. <clears throat> in this instance, the alt text is beside the link here. I have NCDPI Twitter, and that would take me to, their, to the DPI Twitter page. But right beside it, I have this little icon that should, that um, stands for this link is going to open in a new window. So for this icon, it is an image, but the alt text can simply read new window. I don't need to, des to describe this image by saying it's an almost closed in box and in the top right hand corner there's an arrow pointing, you know, uh, to the <laughs> to the corner. I, that's really not pertinent information. This is just an icon that means it's going to open in a new window. So I could put alt text for that simple little icon and just put new window because that's going to tell me what's going to happen within that, um, you know, within this, within this link. Similarly, this image here of a printer, um, this icon of a printer. Typically, we know when we come across that on a page, it just means that I'm going to be, this is the option where I can print this information, print this page. And so in this case, I don't need to describe what this icon looks like. I just need to tell you what's going to happen when you click it. <laughs> so in this case, the alt text can simply read print this page. That might be all I need. Um, so, and you can see again, I'm including the HTML down below so that if you're um, familiar and interested in in how that would look in the in the background in the code, the alt text would be print this page for this printer icon. Similarly, alt text here for this search, um, this magnifying glass that typically means search. This is an image, so it does need alt text. But instead of telling you it's a magnifying glass, I can just put search because you're it's describing the function for that icon. So it is a little bit different than, um, than an informational type um, image. In this case, when we're talking about functional images, we really need to include the function. And sometimes that's all we need to, excuse me, all we need to include. There's no need to tell you that this is a magnifying glass. I just need to let you know that that's a search button. So when we're talking about education, <laughs> educational images, rather than just um, a lot of selfies or uh, pictures of, of people uh, that we might typically come across or typically used on social media, oftentimes in the educational landscape, our images are going to be requiring quite a bit of additional information or a different lens 
um, because describing that picture over the phone was probably going to include some more academic language or additional context because we're talking about a specific um, learning target. And so I appreciate this website, this uh, that I'm going to click on here, because it gives you options to learn more, um, some activities on how to learn when to describe images and how to describe them. So I'm just going to click on this. This is the poet training tool. And I can actually come down. There's eight different examples. You can see everything. I'm going to zoom in here. Everything from this looks like an image from a textbook that talks about um, how blood flows through the heart to this pretty intricate <laughs> um, math equation down to this uh, looks like some scanned photographs. And so it looks like it's just uh, someone put four images on a scanner and scanned it in. This image it looks like a page from a picture book. This image, which looks like something that might be included in a news article, it looks like um, from a courtroom where they're showing some evidence. This that's a bar chart that includes some um, that includes a, a some textual information above it, some information about the various parts of the graph, and even the color legend. This one that kind of looks like a, a banner on a web page that kind of includes maybe the the title of a section or the title of the page itself. <clears throat> and then this one that is like a map of the United States with a color coded legend. I can't zoom in close enough to see exactly how, what that reads. But basically what you can do on this web page is click on start this example and it kind of walks you through multiple questions to help you understand when you need to write alt text. So it actually includes um, the image in context so you can kind of see exactly what context that image is included in. It looks like this is included in um, some sort of textbook. And so it might be helpful for me to read the, the surrounding text to see what I might need to include in the alt text. And also notice it even has a caption. <laughs> um, so then I can go through, let's just, I'm gonna pick an incorrect answer. I'm gonna say, this is a cartoon. So when I click next, I get some feedback to let me know that that was inaccurate. So let me try graph instead, and then I can go down and continue working through the wizard to say, what's the purpose of this image? Well, it provides some needed information. Um, does it provide information that's not available in the surrounding text? Well, I would really need to look at that page to make sure, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's not included. Let's see if I guessed correctly, I did. <laughs> um, does it contain embedded text? Yep, I see text in the image itself, so I'm gonna put that. Would a text description adequately convey the main idea of this image? Could I write alt text for this image? Yes, I think I can. It might be pretty lengthy, but I can do it. And then I get some, some kind of feedback from the experts to say, um, you know, it, provides the text surrounding, provides a high level description, but it lacks detail that's only available in this graphic here. Um, so it kind of gives me some, some tips and tricks on what I might do, you know, to, to write that alt text. So just some, some helpful practice on when to describe images. <clears throat> and then this, um, sorry. And then the other link here, how to describe similarly will walk you through the process of how to describe this image. So it practices some different um, strategies or some different important pieces of alt text, like context is key. So it kind of helps you in this example, focus on context. It might, um, some other key things to consider are your audience. So this one's gonna help you consider your audience and, and walk you through an example of how to do that. Um, and of course, some other things as well. So how to ensure that you're being objective, focusing on tone and, and language. And then I appreciate that it even helps you with some specific, again, kind of academic type images. So art versus chemistry versus diagrams versus flow charts and how to write alt text for that. So that's just an example. Those are just some examples of some, um, some practices that you can do. Um, to, to practice writing alt text. And I know we're coming up on our time, so let me go through these next few tips very quickly and then we'll wrap up. So a few additional tips. 
when you're writing alt text for things like GIFs or even um, when you're using emoticons, it's important to realize that you need alt text for those as well. Now, alt text is already built into the emoticons. So before you start throwing in a bunch of smiley faces in between every word <laughs> in your next email or in your next tweet, <laughs> Uh, be cognizant that a screen reader is going to read this alt text every time it comes across one of those emoticons. Now, again, with AI, it's important to recognize that AI may not write good alt text. It might write something like maybe an image of food and text. That's not really helpful <laughs> if, if there's some contextual information that's important. So it's, it's important to... Um, to, to read through when AI helps you with your alt text and make sure that you edit that so that it's appropriate. Um, kind of keep out links and hashtags in your alt text because alt text does not have things that are clickable. So if you do have a link or hashtag to share, make sure you keep that outside of your alt text and have it somewhere nearby in, in, the, um, in your text outside of the alt text so that it's easily to, um, accessible by clicking. Now, accessible math is kind of its own bear. So I've included some resources here to help understand how to make accessible math equations. Um, and I encourage you to dig into that if you do um, write a lot of, or have a lot of images of math equations, because there, there's definitely some nuance to that and there's some specific tools to help. And at the end of the day, this is about progress over perfection. Writing alt text can be kind of difficult. It's definitely a learning curve there, and it's just going to take practice. So in the meantime, just start including something with your alt text. It may not be the most effective alt text, but just think again in your mind, that quick tip of how would I describe this image over the phone? And, you, and make that be your alt text. And then I encourage you to try some of <clears throat> those practice activities to just get better at writing more effective alt text. And it's just gonna take practice, so focus on that progress over perfection. Um, <clears throat> there are a few um, resources I've included here, including some, um, Veronica is someone who has a blog. Uh, she, has a, she is blind, and so her blog really focuses on kind of that first, first hand user experience. So she gives some tips and and strategies for writing effective alt text. And I have another link there as well. If you're interested in joining our community of practice, I have the link here for you to, um, to sign up to join. And I have tried to design myself this slide deck with accessibility in mind. So here are some of the things that I've done to really focus on accessible um, design in my presentation. So what's mine is yours. Feel free to use this presentation. I'll throw the link again in the chat as well as the link to the community of practice. And I appreciate you um, letting me stretch our time by a couple of minutes. And, um, and I look forward, hopefully you're able to join us for future webinars. Uh, let's see, Sadie, let me jump in here and answer your question before we jump off. I wonder if there's a way to give an emoji alt text aside from the name of the emoji. Draw visual attention to the text, but screen readers read them as named in the emoji keyboard. Yeah, I'm not really sure, um, honestly, myself, Sadie. I know that typically emojis, emoticons, the alt text is already kind of built in. Um, it might be that you could manual, I don't know, honestly, I was going to say you can manually add a picture of an emoticon or emoji um, and add alt text, um, you know, to that image yourself, but I'm honestly not sure how, if there's an option to override the built-in alt text for those types of things. That's definitely something I need to dig into. So see, I'm still learning myself. <laughs> All right, thanks everyone. I hope you have a great day.